In this video we take a look at using uh, continuous dimensions and baseline dimensions in AutoCAD. There's a way that we can create our continuous dimensions that uh, helps us with placement and same thing with baseline. There's a way we can create baseline dimensions in AutoCAD that will help us and make us uh, more efficient in our drafting processes. So if you uh, didn't watch the quick dimensioning video, that's okay. But go ahead and take a minute to draw this figure that you see shown on here. Just do not dimension it. Just draw it the way it's shown. I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of time to do that. Okay, so hopefully you have that drawn now. So we're going to start taking a look at how to create a baseline and continued dimensions rather than just dimensioning the object using linear dimensions. like what we've probably have traditionally been doing so far. Okay, so this stuff's all on the annotate tab of our ribbon. So if we come up to the ribbon, click on annotate, we're starting to take a look at uh, these commands that's underneath this dimensions panel. So right here, it's actually right next to the quick dimension icon. Right here, if we click, click that little drop list arrow, we have an option for continuous dimension and for baseline dimensions. So if we go ahead and click on continue, uh, we have to have a, a dimension that exists first. And so go ahead and um, click on your dimension and we need to put a linear dimension in here. So let's go ahead and dimension from this lower left hand corner to the center of our circle. And we need to go ahead and get it placed where we want it to be. So that's going to be 5 eighths of an inch down from the bottom of my object. So we have it placed in there. And now we can go ahead and do our continuous dimensions. So now come on back click on that icon, select continue, and now we're going to be placing dimensions as they continue on going left to right. So the next thing is click on this endpoint, click on your next endpoint, click on the endpoint for your center line, and then click the lower right hand corner, and then go ahead and hit enter. Hit enter again, and you see how it placed all of your dimensions in there. Now you might have to do some grip editing, like these uh, 0.75 dimensions, I can just select them, click on the grip, and just move them to be on the midpoint. And so I can go ahead and force those dimensions to all be lined up in a row, which is just how I want them. Okay, so that's using our continue dimension. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put another dimension in here. We're gonna do that again, going up the side. And so again, we'll need to get our first dimension in there. So I'm actually going to put a dimension from the lower right hand corner to that top horizontal line on my notch that's cut out. I need to get this dimension line placed exactly where it needs to be. That way my dimension spacing will be set appropriately. And now I can go ahead and click on my continue dimensions and it's going to continue off there. Now say that's not the dimension that I wanted to continue from. It goes off the last dimension that you chose. So you can come down to your command line, you can click select and you can select a different dimension to start your continuous dimension from. Okay, Just so happens that was the right dimension that we wanted to, to go off of. So go ahead and click on select again and select your one inch dimension and then we're going to select the end point on our center line select the bottom of our notch and select our upper corner then when we're done go and hit enter a couple times and it's going to place all those dimensions for us and again you might need to do just a little bit of grip editing depending on how these came in but it should be should work out pretty well and should save you some time overall Okay, so that's the continue. Now we can take a look at baseline. So same thing with baseline. You first have to have a dimension in there. So go ahead and click on your linear dimension. And we're just going to dimension it going up the left side. And so same thing. Get your dimension. Get it placed appropriately. So we want it to be 5 eighths of an inch outside of that left side. And now go ahead and come up here. Click on baseline and now start selecting your objects that you want to create dimensions to. 
When you're done, go ahead and hit enter twice. It'll get you out of that. And you'll see how these are all spaced appropriately. And uh, like I talked about in quick dimension video, where it's getting this spacing from is in your dimension style. So if you come back to the home tab on your ribbon, click on your dimension style icon, you go in like you're going to edit that dimension style. And where that's being generated from is this baseline spacing. We have it set to be 3 eighths of an inch. It's going to take that 3 eighths times whatever your scale is. In this case, it's 1. And that's how it decides where to put each of these successive dimension strings. Okay. And then just for good practice, we can go ahead and try that up here on our on the top of this object. So again, you have to get this first one placed correctly. If you don't get your first one in the right spot, then your spacing for the next ones isn't going to be right either. So get the first one placed. Come back to the annotate tab on your ribbon. Click on baseline, and it's going to be referencing the left side of that line. Again, you still have those options of using select if it's not the correct dimension that it's referencing for your baseline. In this case, it is, and just go through, start clicking on endpoints, and you'll find that this is a much better way to do continue and baseline dimensions than just by using the linear dimension command. Okay, so that's how to use continue and baseline. I hope you find it helpful as you. Uh, continue on down learning how to be a drafter.